in this tutorial, we're going to look at making um, using text frame options. Text frame options are a great way to keep things clean on your InDesign artboard and to make sure that we have um, things inside of a text frame. We want a limited amount of text frames as possible when we're designing. And this is a great way to use text frames and keep everything inside a text frame. So I'm going to start off with a new file, a new document, and I'm going to make sure it's an 8.5 by 11, just something very simple just to play around with. We don't need too many parameters, but I do want to take off my facing pages, inches, facing pages, just for now, just to show you on this example. So I'm just off and I'll press create and there I have, I have my bleed set up, which I really don't need. My margins are set up in a certain way. That's fine too. Now text frame options can offer us, once again, really keeping our text frames simple, clean. We can go back and edit them very easily. Uh, a nice way to do it. What I want to do first, I'm going to go to my pages uh, panel, go to my master page, and I'm just going to, on my master page, it's highlighted. I'm going to go to my layout and margins and columns, because if I have multiple pages, I should set up my columns here. I'm going to have a couple of columns. I'm just going to set up two for now, just keep it simple. Two columns, the gutter is the same, keep it simple, nice and easy. What I can normally do if I was going to do uh, create a two column structure here with type. I just create, click on my type tool and click and drag a text box, text frame, and right click and just say insert uh, fill with placeholder text. And there it is. And I'll say, oh, you know what? I want this to carry across two uh, columns. So that's not a problem. So I just click on this little out port here, click. Then I can click and drag and whatever size I want. And then if I minimize this one, instead of it having an overwritten text, it just flows in to this text box. Now that's fine and I have a two column structure here. But a better way to do that is use text frame options. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna span a whole text frame across this entire uh, width of the margin. I'm just gonna once again fill with placeholder text and there's my placeholder text. But instead of splitting up into two separate, I'm just gonna actually put a column structure inside of my text frame. I'm gonna right click on it and I can go to text frame options which is also command B or sorry yeah command B or I can go to object and text frame options here command B so I'm going to click on command B and look what I have I have a few different options I can play around with here the very first thing I want to do anytime I open up a dialog box with this I want to click on the preview so I can see the live action actually happening right there what I'm doing so what I want to play with first is doing the exact same thing I did up here but inside the text frame I click on two, look, it does the exact same thing. It adds two columns, or I could add more. I could add many columns. But for now, I'm just gonna stick to the two column structure. I could change up the width of the entire text frame. I could change up the gutter of what I want in here to whatever I want. But obviously, I'm gonna stick with the gutter that I currently have. Uh, what was that, six, six, seven? And then I'm also can look at something else here. This is a great way to play around with structure here inside of a text frame, inset spacing. Now watch what happens along the edge of my text frame inside. It's like padding inside of a text frame. I'm gonna add some padding and the link is on, meaning it's gonna happen for all my top, bottom, left and right. And look what happens when I add some padding. It adds an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna add on the top, the bottom, the right and the left. And obviously I have my little red uh, box, red plus sign, I mean there's overwritten text. That's fine, I could change that after. But it adds extra spacing. Where this comes in really handy, I'm just gonna press okay for now. When I have a text frame box, I'm gonna make a new one right here. And I am set up with my grid and it looks good. I'm gonna fill with some placeholder text. There it is. This comes in very handy when I make a background color. If I make a background color, I might do it this way and I'll click again and I'll make another uh, color there and I'll change it to whatever, it doesn't actually matter. I'll say okay and I'm gonna send it to the back. And what happens is now I have, which is a huge no-no, is to have a background color and then I also have the type touching the border of that background color, that background um, rectangle. That's not good. Now what some of you might do is just decrease the size of my text frame, the width and the height, uh, it doesn't matter, that's fine, but I still wanna stick to the grid that I have. So one way to play around with that, Command B or text frame options and just play around with the inset spacing. If I just wanna play with the left and right, I'll say left and right, and look at that. My grid structure does not change, but just the padding on the inside will bring the content in a little bit. So that's another great way to play around with inset spacing.
Now I'm gonna continue on because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. And there I go, make it a little bit larger just to show you another tip with text frame options. Command B, text frame options. And look at now this vertical justification. Here's another great way. So by default, there are certain things set up by InDesign already. So all the type you're gonna have is set aligned to the top. But if I wanna change it, I wanna align it to the center. So it's gonna vertically align to the center. Or if I wanna center it to the bottom, I can center it to the bottom and or I could justify it, which obviously some of these will work better than others for you. So there's a lot of different play we can have here if we're gonna play around with the number of columns, the inset spacing, vertical justification. Now there's a few other options here I'm gonna play around with just to show you. I'm just gonna say okay, just to bring this up, just to show you an idea here. Okay, so I'm going to click on that again, Command B. Now this time I'm going to go to Column Rules. So I can insert Column Rules, which what that does, it insets a column rule inside each of the gutters that I've made here. And now I have ultimate control over what I want to do. Well, the rule length, I can change up the length of it if I wanted to have a certain structure there. I can change up the offset if I want it to move and how I want it to move, negative and or positive. And I can change up the weight of it, the uh, style of it, the color of it, uh, anything I want, and obviously a tint and all that. So there's a lot of different play we could have with a column rule if we wanted to have that. There's a different amount of baseline options if we want the uh, type to align to a certain uh, baseline, and they have all these different options here. I'm just going to click to ascent, baseline grid, how you want it to be structured, how you want it to be uh, displayed. Auto size, this one's an interesting one too. I don't really play around with this one, but there's different ways to play around with uh, your auto sizing and obviously how you're going to set up that structure. Uh, width only, height only, height and width, keep it proportional. There's a, a bunch of different ways you could play around with that. Once again, I don't, I'm not too familiar with this. I don't play around with this, but there is a lot of control you have over your type. And I did all of that inside one text frame, which is great. So I'm just gonna go back to off, go to my general, go back to two, because I'm gonna show you one more thing that you could do with this. Now it's not inside text frame options, but because I have it this way, I'm able to do one more thing. Now let's pretend I have my, I'm going to get rid of my column rules as well. And I'm just going to say, okay, what I can do now, if I had one of these was a title, I'm just going to press enter and this was my title. What I can do, I could actually span two columns or as many columns as I have set up for this to be centered. So right now if I center this, it's only centered inside this column. This, uh, this grid column, but I want it to actually span both columns and be the center of both columns. How do I do that? Very simple, I'm gonna to go to my paragraph panel. I'm gonna to go to the drop down and click on span columns. Now watch what happens. Right now it's set to single column by default. If I preview this and go to span columns, I can actually now span that column. See, it spans both columns. How many columns? All the columns. If I was set up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I could actually say, no, I wanted to span only three of the five or six of the eight or whatever. But now I actually set it up so this is the title um, and it spans both of those columns. A really great way to play around uh, with that. Now there's other controls as well, but this is how I just want to show you really quickly how to span columns. And once again, all of this is set up a great way inside one text frame. So that means I move, I'm just moving one text frame around. I don't have to select two text frames and then have a separate text frame for my title and all this. And I have control over this text frame options. Once again, option or object, text frame options, command B or right click command B. It gives you all these great options to play around with inside of one text frame. It gives you great control. It limits the amount of text frames you have. Uh, it's very clean and a great way to play around in InDesign.